Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast, where today... We have taken back the battle barge from those four rowdy invaders known as Lothraths. <laughs> as we return from our travels across England and, of course, Warhammer World. So, strap yourselves in as I'm joined by a tall guy, a short guy, and a guy who owes all three of us money. <laughs> I'm your host, Tom, and these are my co-hosts. Money. Money. <gasps> well, hello, everyone. My name is Lucas, or better known as Moots. Hello. You know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> You know, these guys go by the fucking law of, if you say it enough times, eventually it'll be funny. But I'm of the opposite opinion. <laughs> I guess we know who owes the money. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing this afternoon, gentlemen? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm uh, just um, getting back into being in Sweden. Feels weird. I mean, we literally just uh, returned back home yesterday. Um, and, uh, man... Two weeks of uh, being in England, having uh, to see these guys every day. You know, it's uh, it's an experience. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was fucking exhausting, one could say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two weeks in England and my bank account is way lighter than I would like it to be. <laughs> see, Mooch is just suffering from the, um, from, like, the lack of fancy land air. And it's just gotten back into him again now. So it's like... Dude, it was so fucking warm in England. It's it was not warm. Moots is the only person I know when he got off the plane. Granted, it was hot for England, but it came out and he went, "This is goddamn fucking tropical, boys." <laughs> <laughs> only person I've ever known to call England tropical. You're going to fucking die when you get to California, Moots. I hope you know that. Well, I imagine <laughs> that in California it will at least be, like, dry warm. But in England, it's it's humid, so it's like it's warm. You just feel, the, like, the, the sweat just fucking clings to you. Oh, I hate it. I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was a nice change of pace. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too warm for me. We have to quickly point out, before this episode really gets underway, a big thank you to the Law Crimes guys, as we mentioned in the intro, for covering our entire last episode, because we were unable to do one. So, it'll be in the description of that episode, it's going to be in the description of this one, that's Law Crimes, that is The Remembrancer, aka Andy, Colin, aka Pancreas No Work, uh, Hal the Amber King, and Eli, Deadless of the Dark Gods. Uh, go check out their episode, and go check out the uh, Law Crimes channel. They really saved our asses big time on that last one. I would like to state this. He is saying this before we've gotten a chance to review what they've given us. So his stance on that may change depending on what the content of that episode is. <laughs> this is a message from the past. So uh, literally, because they have, that episode is going live tomorrow. So in in our uh, from our perspective, as we're recording this, as we're recording this, yeah. But um, uh, it was quite funny to have the pleasure. So so hello, future humans. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I hope people know that this is a recording, like the live chat, and people are like probably commenting in tandem with what's happening on the screen. No, it's a recording. We cannot respond to you. <laughs> Some people who use YouTube don't understand that if you watch a premiere, that's not the same as watching a live stream. Mm. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. I can see how one would make that mistake. But if you're making that mistake right now, you're watching a premiere, not a live stream. It's not the same. I'm sorry to say. I can't. I, I mean, I will read your messages as it goes live because I lurk in the chat on. But, in, uh, the chat, uh, in the chat, in the chat, <laughs> in the chat, <shit. laughs> in, in the live chat, you, you know what I mean. I see what you're posting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, John. J John. John. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we should get on with the models of the week before we start breaking out into talking about the trip this time around. Song singing. I love singing. Me and Aaron did a lot of singing during the trip. A Star is Anonymous, the musical? Yeah, I fucking hated it. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't so, there for when we went and picked up Moots' fucking thing. That was, yeah, that was that was a musical fucking oh, side yeah. quest, that was. I just said, let's do the models of the week before we get into it, you kid. <laughs> <laughs> right, on the screen behind me was chosen by Red, and this is a wonderful dinosaur of some variety by Angel of Steel. Dinosaur. Carnosaur. Denver, the last dinosaur. Is a, is a, it is a reptilian of some caliber. <laughs> it's a bird. It, it is a bird. It has eggs. It has, <laughs> it, it's protecting its eggs. A proud mother protecting its oh, eggs. So it is. Oh, that's really cute, actually. Over here, we support reptilian motherhood. 
It has an axe. Is it chewing on something? It has an axe in its head. It's it's chewing on. Yeah, it's eating a guy with an axe. Oh uh-huh. yeah, fuck that guy. This is peak femininity. I'm in. I believe it. But anyway, I I, I really like the colors. I like I like very colorful things. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think the carna the carnosaur, whatever the hell is this thing's called, especially mm-hmm. because it's accurate. Because we pr- probably depending on how evolution works, the dinosaurs were actually probably pretty colorful. Yeah. Anyway, sidetrack. Um, I, I like the pinks. I like the transition to the blue and the markings on the side and the little yeah jewelry on the tail and the whole scene of him eating uh, of her eating something. Mm-hmm. Uh, a dude that tried to attack the nest. Really good. I like it. Yeah, and the base is really nice. I mean, it, the whole thing tells a uh, a nice little story, and uh, it looks cool. Yeah, sweet. Right, moving on. Uh, this next one was chosen by Moot, and this was by Hello. a user in our Discord known as Deli Maru. And Deli Maru has done a really, really fucking awesome Emperor's Champion model. Yes, I the uh, edge highlighting on this, like the bowel damage and the base. I mean, it's it, it just looks really fucking sweet honestly personally i think just that blade how he's done the blade is really really special it's clean as fuck oh yeah the non-metal metallic is fucking phenomenal the uh, uh deli mara has actually been on the server for quite some time yeah they started doing night lord stuff and they've really improved as a painter since the, they started uh posting in the server actually i think we featured deli Maru's stuff before yeah deli Maru has been in the asante's anonymous discord for over a year Oh yeah! God damn! Deli Maru joined us in uh, July 2023. God damn! I feel sorry for them. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they've only ever improved every time they post. It's really good to see. It's really cool to see. I mean, just just look at the painting on the um, backpack. I, I think at least that's like the high uh, the uh, lighting effect there is painted on and looks super fucking sweet. You can see it on the front leg as well, at the, at the front of the model. It's really good. It seems like every time I see an Emperor's Champion model, it's always someone, like, it's very clearly someone's, like, best miniature every time they post it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like, every time someone posts a, an Emperor's Champion, they always look so goddamn good. It, it is just one of those minis that really, I mean, it doesn't require you to, like, put in your absolute best, but when you put in your absolute best into it, it just looks really, really nice. It's a good mini. Yeah. Well, I think for me, I mean, I've done one of these that I, I really enjoyed working on. I think I did a decent enough job on my one. Um, th- some, something with how the front of the model is all reaching upwards and stretching out upwards, that a lot of those front panels do beg for you to put maximum effort into it because there's no little gribbly bits or shit in the way. So even for amateur painters, there's kind of that desire to put more work into it just because of how the model is posed. So yeah, no, exceptional job, Dali Maru. Right, moving mm-hmm. on to the last mod of the week. This one was picked by me, and this was made by Hustech, and Hustech has created uh, Azrael, and by god, you did a really, really good job on that sword there, Hustech, really good job, really like this, I think that was the, the main reason for me picking this one, um, I, I know he said he's finished it, he has said he's finished it, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he, he goes away and looks back at this one, decides to put just as much work into the cloth as he's put into that sword there. Because if that sword is, like, any indication of how well you can paint when you, like, sit down and go balls deep, I'd love to see how the rest could turn out. Because that's a, you've got a really great painter within you, Hustek. you just got to carve him out a little bit. <laughs> Definitely. It's serviceable as a dark angel, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> right, gentlemen, moving on to the main topic of the week of the episode even so as you all may have gleamed from listening to our extended intro we've spent the last two and a half weeks together in person somehow in the uk visiting each other and whammer world and various other bits and bobs and bobs and bits it's terrible along the way it's been an absolute nightmare i think honestly i'm gonna end it all after this goodbye (laughs) (laughs) episode ends god (laughs) that's that's right last episode of last episode of the podcast guys (laughs) it's been real or i wish i could say that but you know uh i'm back they didn't want me damn (laughs) god damn it this is bullshit i want my money back (laughs) (laughs) me too me too red so who wants to who wants to who wants to give them the rundown of how it started because I wasn't there for the opening chapter, was I? What do you mean, the uh, opening chat? I mean, no, you were. You you were there when... Did I? Oh, I vi- oh yeah, I bounced out partway through for a, a couple of days. Yeah, I remember now. Miles <laughs> away. It has been, it's been such a blur the last two weeks, I swear to God. <laughs> it, it has. It's fucking been very exhausting. <laughs> With me awakening on a fine morning in Stanwell, 
and is picking up an orangutan from the train station. <laughs> there he is. Godspeed. I thought he got hit by a truck. Um, and then he st- uh, we fucked around for one day. Next morning, went over to Glorious Heathrow Terminal 2 short stay parking. £30 an hour. Um, <laughs> and grabbed these two dickheads an hour apart. But Moots was 50 minutes late. Huh? I wasn't late. What the fuck are you guys on about? Me and Tom kept mistaking this one random bold serv- like, uh, service guy in the store for him. Oh, yeah, we never spoke about this. Yeah, so at the exit of your terminal, there was this dude who was, like, stacking shelves, I think. Uh Uh-huh. But from behind, he might as well have been your clone. (laughs) (laughs) And so, like, every 30 seconds, he was shuffling around, moving around and shit. It's like every 30 seconds, I'd, like, knock out, like, Mooch is finally here, it's finally here. It's just this fucking guy stacking shelves again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. The guy, just for con, just for uh, context, audience. If you want a description of the guy, the guy was about three foot nine, uh, shiny bald head. <laughs> what? Three foot nine? What the hell? Little shoulders. That's being generous, man. <laughs> you, you, you saw an <laughs> actual small person. What the hell? But yeah, we even mistook him or small children for moots, and it was pretty regular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was still on the plane, mind you. Flight from California to goddamn London was fucking nine hours long. It was terrible. I hated every moment of it. The Swedish gnome. And we carry him to, over to Terminal 3 to pick up the red. And red was on time. I, 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 I hopped onto uh, Aaron's shoulders and he carried me all the way to Terminal 3. <laughs> Because he has he has long legs, I have tiny legs. It is uh, like mas- like Master Blaster from fucking <laughs> <laughs> the Ferrator for Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that. Uh, then we quickly went uh, off to uh, drop our shit off at uh, at, uh, at Aaron's, and then we fucking what do we do after that? I guess we just sort of existed in uh, in in stains for a bit. I actually don't remember what. Oh yeah, we went to Forbidden Planet in London, and I found. By the way, if you if if you're watching this and you live in like anywhere in the London area, go to the Forbidden Planet there. Go to their fucking their their manga section, oh, yeah. and they have a bunch of Warhammer magazines there that are like ten dollars a pop, and they have models in them that cost up an upwards of fifty dollars in there. But you all get them for ten dollars. I spent like it's insane. Fifty like seventy pounds. And I put all the math together. I saved myself like 250 US dollars. That's insane. It was quite weird watching Red sort of wander out with um, magazines filled with sprues. Because I was standing outside. I think I was standing outside before everyone. And I just see this giant mustached man with a grin on his face. I look to my right and it's just it's just there, this bag filled with sprues. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, huge fucking discount. Forbidden Planet was awesome. The um, I got my girlfriend a fucking massive Pikachu Squashmallow. Hell yeah. Uh, which made her very, very happy. But, you know, it was really, really cool. I'd love to go there again. It's called a Squashmallow? They're called Squashmallows, yeah. Or Squishmallows? Fuck? Squashmallows? Squishmallows? It is Squashmallow, isn't it? Squishmallows. Yeah. Squishmallows. Oh, there you go. I mean, uh, that was my second ever time being at uh, Forbidden Planet. Uh, we also visited, la- later on the trip, visited uh, another Forbidden Planet in Nottingham. But... Yeah. Uh, but uh, that one in specific was the only the the, the second time I've been there. Uh, it's really nice. They uh, I was happy to see some uh, some Valiant comics there. Hell yeah, representation. <laughs> 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 but uh, lo- lots of good deals. Yeah, just uh, go go down into the fucking uh, basement part. Uh, find that shelf with all the with all the Warhammer stuff. Totally fucking worth it. Spent an absolute arm and a leg on Magic: The Gathering <laughs> whilst you were there. That was fun. Got half the fucking time you were talking about Magic the Gathering. <laughs> it's a fun game. It's, it's just a f- fun little game. Like, any, any, any fucking, any chance they got, they mentioned, talked about Magic the Gathering. <laughs> well, it was, actually, I will jump ahead so we can jump back real quick. But at the end of the trip, when Red was getting his tattoo done, I wasn't there for that last portion of the trip because I had work to do. But I remember getting, it was like yesterday or the day before, I got a text from Red at like three in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And it's just Aaron trying to, what, by the by the sounds of the recording, <laughs> Aaron trying, talking to Moots, trying to justify some absurd CDH pick in his deck. And Moots just, and Moots is just looking at Aaron like he, like he wants to check out so <laughs> badly and i got this recording sent to me by red at like three in the afternoon and the grin it put across my face was so fucking funny 
<laughs> that was just that was just a 14 second recording. You you weren't sitting there for the full half hour. <laughs> it was a battle of wills. <laughs> like, but both me and Aaron are very stubborn and we both have uh, very different ways of uh, playing and building uh, Magic the Gathering decks <laughs> oh, and Aaron was just talking about he sorry I'm jumping ahead here we were just talking about uh, like justifying putting Triumph of the Hordes uh, in uh, in the fucking deck and I was like yes of course Triumph of the Hordes yes, yes. <laughs> the audience will definitely know what that is uh, uh, put it up on the screen <laughs> it's, put it on uh, the screen <laughs> it's a uh, it's a card. It's a card I don't enjoy. And uh, I just... Oh, no, it was a conversation. I was... Uh, <laughs> I, I I was uh, I was uh, starting to lose it there for a bit, but <laughs> I think we managed to land on something good on on some some reasonable middle ground. <laughs> any any conversation or argument you have with Aaron with that doesn't end with you immediately choking him out should be considered a win. <laughs> <laughs> By default, requires almost saint like patience. Well, that's not, not that's not an option for Moot. You can't reach that high, man. I am an. I'll I'll just kick you and oh sorry, I'll punch you in the nuts, and then you'll fucking as you keel over, I'm gonna put my <laughs> hands. <laughs> and you'll fold like a fucking paper bag, just folds and Moot catches him like a fucking Disney princess, then starts choking him out. <laughs> But no, uh, sort of coming back to Forbidden Planet in London, after that, Aaron wanted to take us, what's it called, Uzumaki's? Is that what yes. it's called? Uzumaki. There's a little place called Uzumaki's where you have to reserve to get a seat to eat. But um, I just I just wanted to go to get a specific drink from there. It was like a coffee drink with like boba in it that I really liked. Mm. That was my entire goal there. We were sat there fucking waiting in the scorching heat of their little waiting area, trying to get our drinks. And I was sat there thinking to myself, this is a waste of time. This is a waste of money. I'm uncomfortable. I'm sweaty as fuck. And I was sat there thinking, oh, Aaron's an actual dickhead for bringing us here. This is such a dumb idea. <laughs> and then the fucking... <laughs> yeah, and Tom, Tom is, tell is saying this... Tom is saying this to me, and I'm sitting there listening to him going, it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, then the, and then the fucking boba arrives, and I drink it, and it's like, wow, this is actually the best boba I've ever fucking had. It was so fucking delicious. It tasted so good. Uh, was it worth it? Yeah, just. Just. If we were stuck there for another five minutes, I think Aaron might have gotten a surprise. Um, no, I can't say that. I can't say that on air. No, don't worry. <laughs> for, for finish the sentence, come on. Moving on. Coward. What, a colonoscopy? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I was I was going to turn Aaron into uh, into into less into less <laughs> into less. So just leave it at that. You're going to take away one of the A's in my name. He's already a vegetarian, dude. What more can you do? <laughs> oh wait, did we skip the part where we went to um, uh, mini golf and? Uh... Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, Candon, that that was that was after we went to Forbidden Planet, I think. Yes, in between. Yeah, yeah, we went to Candon, and uh, that that was probably I love street food more than most people. Um, <laughs> that was that was a pretty that was a pretty good place to see all that uh, all that type of street food. We got Moots, yeah, his signature cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> we we re so we realized that during uh, when we were there that. I was basically dressed like Indiana Jones, so we we were like, we have to find a cowboy hat, and we found one, and <laughs> for the rest of the trip, that cowboy hat was my personality. Yeah. That was... <laughs> they put the proper image in the reference too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have the proper image, let's see. Like, no joke, the guy fucking kept it on for the entire trip. <laughs> we almost, we almost bought so the hat was like put me back like 60 quid and then we went to another store because we had to get him a satchel as well because oh, we'll get him a satchel we'll get we'll put a satchel on moots 40 quid uh, it was oh, no, it was the, sorry yeah it was the satchel yeah so uh they handed me uh the hat for 40 quid i went to the next store to get the satchel and they're like, the satchel's 60 quid and i'm like i can't justify dumping 100 quid into this gag so we left without the satchel but he did he was indiana moots for the rest of the trip and it was wonderful <laughs> <laughs> I think me and you had the same reaction. We looked at the satchel and was like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moots will survive. Oh. You guys, I, like, I kind of find it quite fun. You guys all got fairly normal things. Me and my sister, being the fucking gremlins we are, went around and we found the fucking, this place called the Yorkshire Burrito. And it was a whole English Sunday dinner put into a giant Yorkshire pudding as a wrap. 
rolled it up and served it like that. Sunday roast. Sorry, Sunday roast. Roast dinner, Sunday roast, yeah. Um, that sounds awful. What the fuck is a Sunday roast? You, I, that did not explain anything. Uh, keep in mind, just for context, it was a vegetarian Sunday roast as well. <laughs> so instead of, Which sounds even worse. Instead of having any meat, it was all cauliflower. <laughs> It was lovely. It was really nice. Burritos are a cornerstone of American cuisine where I'm at. And I, I dread to think what type of bastardization the fucking British have done. <laughs> it's such a great cultural dish. <laughs> uh, it, I, will, I will admit, it, it looked really good. It smelt a bit funky, I won't lie. I didn't have one. I had, what did I get? I got, uh, first I got... I got some really spicy calamari, which fucking slapped. Mm. Uh, what was the second thing I got? I got something else as well, but I can't remember. Um, but I remember watching Moot get through some really fuck. Was it you, Moot? Yeah, you got through those that really fucking spicy chicken. Mm, yes, that looked really good. It's very tasty. Yum 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 yum. But that was no, that was really <laughs> great. I really really enjoyed that segment of the trip. That was really fun. Ken's, a, if if you're visiting uh, London, Cannon's a great place to get some ha- halfway decent food. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Especially in the apocalyptic state that is fucking Britain. <laughs> where... Just don't trust any of the tattoo places on the street. What, what about the tattoo places? <laughs> don't fucking trust them. The ones no. in Camden. Don't fucking trust them. Oh, why? How so? They're just a bit sketchy. A little bit too sketchy. Oh, I see. <laughs> is, is there a certain that that makes it? It makes it makes yeah. You make it sound like like there's a certain level of sketchy that you're still acceptable with. Oh, for sure. What, <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> what what is the top sketchy level you will accept on? Uh, I got tattooed during COVID. Admittedly, uh, during the lockdown, mm-hmm. I had that. Um, that was about as far as I'd go. Okay. <laughs> That's not so bad. Or, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm Swedish. We didn't care about those things. So, I mean... <laughs> well, yeah, there's like three people living in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but keep my moots is only half of one of them. <laughs> <coughs> Fuck off. Fuck you. All breed, no height, though. Uh. Oh, yeah. All girth. We also went to the Natural History Museum. That was fucking fun. Oh, that was great, yeah. I met my ancestors. Oh, yeah, the the missing link. <laughs> but that was great. They, it was quite funny because I wasn't... I was pretty sure I was going to hate the Natural History Museum. Damn. Uh, I thought it was going to be boring as shit. But it's weird. As soon as I got into the room filled with all the rocks and gems and stuff and saw that one sapphire topaz the size of a gorilla's fist in the middle of the room, I was like, whoa, that's a quest item. This is actually really cool. (laughs) (laughs) Alarms go off, the vault shuts, Tom's enclosed for a thousand years. (laughs) Ah, fuck. (laughs) Literally, Tom, we fucking looked at that thing, I was like, that's a fucking arcane signet right there, boys. That's fucking... The whole ass arcane signet. That's that's, that's the the father of the arcane signet. But no, it it was really, really fun. Um, doing the the Natural History Museum. The only problem is, I think I'd sweated. I must have sweated about like a liter by the time it was all done. It was so sweaty, uh, but it was good. It was just really, really sweaty. Like, oh man, it, I was dying there, bro. Like, really dying. Um, but we got to meet who else's ancestor? Did we get to meet there? Um, there's someone. Has, someone else has a. Someone else has a picture of. I think it was Moots sat next to a dwarf or something. I have no idea. Sat next to a dwarf. No, who who has the gorilla pictures? The gorilla pictures? The gorilla pictures. Yeah, we saw the stuffed gorilla. Oh, yeah. That stuffed gorilla looked like a king. (laughs) (laughs) It was Harambe's grandfather. No, I comment, like, this gorilla apparently was, like... Uh, grow like grew up in like an enclosure or like a, a like a sanctuary, and uh, they apparently had like a really good relationship with the people that she grew up around. And I was thinking to myself, it's kind of morbid that this gorilla had a full life full of people that uh, loved her, and then they just stuffed her corpse and put her right here in the fucking museum. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like it was des- it was described something in the style of oh everybody loved her and then we stuffed her and put her in the museum. And when she died, we skinned her body then st- and put her fucking desecrated cadaver corpse here in the museum so children can breathe on the glass. <laughs> we obviously had to preserve her. Well, that was the only logical choice we had. <laughs> And I was like, dude, this is exactly what we should, we should be doing with our own dead, right? I, 
Like, when eventually Tom passes, I want to stuff him and keep him in my living room. <laughs> we spoke about this. you got to turn me into a coffee table, right? Oh, my God. What the- I'm not even a coffee. No, you're, you're just going to be sitting on the couch, dude. Like like the old Ronald McDonald. Like- oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Statues. And people are like, who the fuck is that? Oh, that's Tom. He doesn't talk much anymore. R- rumor has it his cadaver still farts occasionally. <laughs> 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 I put a whippy cushion in there. <laughs> You know, when I die, I wish for my body, when it's fully covered in tattoos, to be turned into tasteful playmats. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Not gonna Aww. happen. You're getting incinerated, bro. There's, there's no two ways about it. No, it's not even incinerate. We're just going to throw your body into the fucking uh, River Thames. <laughs> Thames. <laughs> you know, that's, that's as, uh, that's as uh, ceremonious as it gets in Britain. I'll take that. That's what they did to the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we they we they say we just saw her tomb in uh, Windsor Castle, but actually she wasn't there. <laughs> I don't believe for a second. Uh, by the way, we went to Windsor Castle towards the end. Um, that was a nice glorified hike. We couldn't even go inside of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as like historical like sites you can go see, it was a it was a. It was a four six out of ten, pound in my opinion. fifty for five hundred milliliters of water. Hell yeah! It was thirty. It was thirty three pounds just to get through the fucking thing to do a glorified hike on some blacktop. That was absolutely asinine, honestly. All to see some uh, rich people's houses, the uh, fucking Anne Orlando, uh, fucking and uh, and then we also had to pay extra to see the uh, goddamn moat garden. So I mean, it's which isn't normally open. Uh, apparently that was a charity thing and it was only, that was only like two pounds I tried to sell Tom <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't take me yeah I, I walked up and she, and the and, and the nice old lady there was just like hello uh, like um you, how, when, how much is it like two pounds like do you accept people <laughs> <laughs> I turned to Tom like he works kind of and he's like oh, no unfortunately then uh, then moots came by when she asked how many adults I turned to him going well he's an adult at heart <laughs> And then there's this, uh, there's a Spanish woman there going, who needs uh, enemies with friends like these? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, wasn't that me? Wasn't that in response to me fucking paying for all the, all the tickets to the, um, the, the garden? Oh, maybe. Uh, I think, I don't know. I thought, I thought it was a response to me digging into everybody <laughs> for no reason. Like the first interaction I've had, I will ever have with these people is me making fun of y'all. <laughs> the only, only interaction. Good times. <laughs> But no, that was fun. I, I, I don't know if we jumped ahead to Windsor, but immediately after Windsor, I took uh, I took the boys to their first and only experience of proper fine dining. Uh, Red was like a fish out of fucking water. <laughs> it was absolutely- yeah. I was looking. I was looking at the fucking menu, and and Moots suggested something. I turned to him like Moots. I come from a blue collar family. I'm blue collared. I don't know what the fuck any of that means. No, I think well, I think we um, we we picked Red starter for him because all the starters were far out of his tax bracket. Unfortunately, it was a diced up um, beef tartar, Aaron steak steak tartar, even uh, tartar. That's the one that's tartar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then he, the guy started mixing it in the bowl in front of him. Do you want this? Do you want that? And Red was just stood there, silent, just oh. Oh, just staring at the fucking thing. He's like, why is this necessary? What the fuck is this guy doing to keep my food? It was the thoughts I could see in his fucking head. <laughs> for, for some Swedish uh, uh, lore, in Swedish it's called uh, Roa Rara, uh, which uh, basically just uh, translates to Roster. <laughs> All right, taking that off the um, bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, raw? St- so wait, all the ingredients were raw, and th- that was it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, the, the meat was raw, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, everything was even maybe raw. I don't know. Yeah. All, all, Interesting. Yeah, all that you ate there was raw. You ate raw beef, raw egg, and whatever the other shit was. Yeah. God damn, I'm surprised you don't get food poisoning from that. <laughs> well, keep in mind, we, we, the place we went to was pretty fucking, you know, swanky. Mm-hmm. Um, what did Aaron get? Aaron got fisted. Moot got food. <laughs> I got food. Well, I, I, I took pictures of my food, so I can put that on the fucking screen. He took pictures of his food so he could prove he ate somewhere expensive. <laughs> no, my parents were on a cruise at the time, so uh, um, I had to try and sort of um, compare. I don't know. I had to compete. That was it. Um, mm, I thought. I thought you. Oh yes, you got the th- you got the ball of thing. 
The ball the of ball cheese. Of thing. <laughs> the ball of thing. The ball of thing. The in that fourth image. Very good stuff. Yeah. I just got uh, I got some really swanky uh, smoked salmon cream cheese on rye bread, which was really nice because mm. they gave me a half lemon. And as soon as anyone gives me a half lemon to put on food, it is going on the food. I, I, I love it when people hand me lemons to put on food. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, I smile. <laughs> Tom, you do terrible things to lemons. I, I should say when I when I when he put all the like tartar stuff on the on the plate, I looked I looked around for like <laughs> the fuck do I do that? I, then I just immediately grabbed the bread and started sli- like fucking scraping it across the bread, and I just ate it like that. And you you did look like you were looking for help a little bit to be fair. <laughs> well, because they also brought like like you started slowing down. I, I was confused. When the guy put the second set of cutlery on the table, that's when it kicked in. I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> Wait a I was like, "What the fuck do you mean the second set? It was the exact same as the previous set of fucking utensils I had." And he puts a second set. Oh, they're smaller. That's right. My hands are big. <laughs> 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 Why the fuck do I need a second set of utensils? All of it goes into my body. I'm not worried about mixing shit up. <laughs> Whenever we get, whenever you get to the steaks, I'll just take you guys to a fucking steakhouse. Hell oh. yeah! The steak there was all right. I, 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 but like, I don't know. I, I, I appreciated it, uh, and I'll, I'll be grateful. I'm uh, eternally grateful all the time for when you know, I, I'm given something. But uh, as far as it, it being a second choice, if I had a choice to go there again, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, I am not. I am not the. I am not the target demographic. For that type of... You're not him. You're just not him. I am not him. I'm not that guy. But we got to... We, after we, after we had... What was our mains? I got a lovely gourmet-ass shepherd's pie. Moots mm. had, uh, like, a uh, truffle chicken. Aaron got fisted again. <laughs> what did you... Oh, you got the steak, obviously, didn't you? Huh? And then for dessert, we got to share in a round of less than all three. Even though it was a hot summer's day, all four of us shared in a round of slightly less than heterosexual <laughs> mint chocolate, <laughs> mint hot chocolate together with extra hot chocolate and cream or whatever on the table out of these out of these fancy little mugs. And it was delicious. It was really nice, yeah. I felt, I felt like that one scene from um, the Polo Express. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they, had, they, they came out with the... Like the little um fuck, I forgot the name of it. it. It was it was just um it was just a little kettle where they put the excess of hot chocolate in, and, and Aaron goes, "It's that thing from Polar Express," and we're like, "You mean the fucking kettle? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking kettle, Aaron? That, that's not a kettle. It is a kettle. What, what else would you call it? You fu- a teacup? That's not a kettle, you dumbass. We had this conversation once before, old man. We'll do it again, old man. I'll put you in the fucking ground." <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that fucking knocked me out. I was, I was, I was not ready for that shit. Uh, I've just googled it. It is a kettle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's an, inor- it's an inordinately fancy kettle, but it is a kettle, kettle nonetheless. Kettle, kettle, kettle. It's exactly what a kettle is. A kettle. The purpose does not denote it not being a kettle. It is still a kettle. How does the blue collar bastard fucking get that? And I don't. Hmm. Because I'm smarter than you. <laughs> because it's a kettle. <laughs> it doesn't matter where what social class you come from. It's still a kettle. What the fuck? <laughs> this, this wasn't a triumph of classism. This was a triumph of IQ, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> That was a, re- but it was a really nice restaurant. I, 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 I was, I was so out of my element, but uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I, we were, I was, I'm not going to deny. It. I, I'm, I was not. It was not my, not my normal shtick. But yeah, it was, it was a nice place to be. I mean, I come in there with like just a t-shirt and fucking worn out fucking jeans and some dirty fucking shoes, and I was like, hell yeah, food. <laughs> we had a waiter in a waistcoat and everything, being all posh, and then there's me just sweating my balls off, stinking to high heaven, wearing a Pokemon shirt, <laughs> just trying to do my best impression of someone who belongs. <laughs> and I'm in a, I'm in a goddamn, <laughs> I was in a goddamn flannel. <laughs> in final and jeans, unshaven for a fucking week, <laughs> and two. It was good though. It was good, but no. We sort of jump jumping back to fucking London. What was that? So I think after the London bit, I had to. We went. No, we went back to. We went back to the Pig of Hill. Pig Hill, indeed. Uh, where we spent a couple of days just sort of playing forty k kill team and magic, didn't we? Really. You're missing the the trip. You're missing the trip over to Swindon, which was this, this is this is what I'm talking about. No, 
No, the the when no the part where we went to took the car to Swindon, we oh. were packed like sardines into the fucking. Because I no, I remember halfway through that trip sending a message to our patron chat saying, "Guys, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna sorry. I'm gonna die listening to fucking caramel dancing in a car full of idiots." As Aaron's bombing it down the motorway in a car that's considerably overweight in pitch black darkness. Yeah, here's the here's the right ones. Darkness. Oh my goodness. It was wildly uncomfortable. <laughs> it, it was not. I, I I was stuck in the back <laughs> with, with Tom. How are you? I mean, you were also. Oh my god. Yeah. No, but uh, so we somehow barely survived that. We get to. Uh, Swindon. Um, oh yeah, we all. Well, yeah, we also forgot to mention the we we're staying in the fucking uh, <laughs> the the fucking probably what was the worst fucking Airbnb in existence. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy! The review I left on them goes live tomorrow. It was an absolute fucking nightmare. Holy shit! The Airbnb. The so three out of four of us woke up the next morning with bug bites on various parts of our bodies uh, immediately next course of op- i mean as soon as i got home and got to see my girlfriend we just put all of my shit through the wash just fucking all of it it was so fucking dodgy uh moots left behind the one ring, <laughs> the one which, ring. which we'll just we'll just explain in, in very simple terms is a card for Magic the Gathering that cost way too much money, but Moots owns one, and he left it there. Now, granted, he did get it back, mm-hmm. but the fucking hoops he had to jump through to actually get it back from the Airbnb were fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, he was stressed He was stressed about it the whole goddamn time. Like, every single day, he's going to Tom's like, hey, Tom, is this, how, do I, how, how do I construct this message to tell this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, do, how do I tell this person in the nicest possible way? Where the fuck is my card? <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, as as I said when when I realized I had uh, forgotten it there, uh, like it's it's just oh oh oh. Let's not forget when he got the fucking one ring card. Guess what he fucking does with it, right? It's, it's, so <laughs> magic. It's a Magic the Gathering card. It, it's a piece of cardboard, and like very few people, I assume, out of the population would actually know what the fuck it, it it's worth or what what value it is. <laughs> And he's like, I don't want anyone to steal this. Someone <laughs> might break into the Airbnb, go right past all of our electronics, laptops, and models that we have everywhere, and just go right fi- find the card. So I'll put it underneath a fucking pillow. <laughs> you fucking gremlin. You golem piece of shit. It was a little bit self-defeating. Most golem type of shit I've seen a man do. <laughs> it was very golem. It was very. That was very Gollum of you. I, I was just, ro- yeah, exactly. I was just role playing as Gollum. I swear it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, it was. It was a joke, guys. It was. It was a meme. <laughs> oh no, it wasn't a joke. It, no, it was that one hundred percent like serious. That was one hundred percent me just going on two hundred percent Gollum. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was living my best Gollum life. <laughs> Oh. Then you lost it immediately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fucking immediately. <laughs> it's part- it was amazing on how fucking fast you lost it. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Yes, so back to Swindon. Played a bunch of games. Once again, spent way too much money on Magic the Gathering. Against ten Terminators. Oh yeah, right. It's a fucking Terminator <laughs> Oh yeah, Moots and Red played a game of boarding actions, and if you know what boarding actions is, it's a very small scale game of 40k on a small, close-knit board. Yeah, 500 points, scale of dark terrain, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Moots, in his infinite wisdom, decided to bring a 10-man blob of Terminators, (laughs) which is a fancy way of, just just to put this in perspective, if you don't know how the game works... That's like trying to swat a fly with a rocket launcher. It, it was just so unreasonably like strong for the game mode they were playing. I brought destroyers. I had my destroyer lord. I had uh, my Scor- my scorpion destroyer lord. My scorpion destroyers. Fucking uh, triarch praetorians. I had to bring ten. I had to bring fucking immortals. A ten man blob of immortals and fucking flares. And Moots brought a ten man uh, blob of terminators, 
some cultists and his chaos sorcerer. <laughs> the chaos sorcerer got annihilated by the Trek Praetorians. The cultists were picking between whether they want to get blasted to death by Tesla ca cannons or skinned alive by flares. <laughs> and the ten man squad spent the whole game trying to get past the destroyers. <laughs> to be fair, you did a very good job of keeping that many fucking Terminators stuck in one room for the whole game. <laughs> oh. Oh, I want to put into context that I am absolutely no power gamer. I, I, I simply saw, hey, I can have ten Terminators. <laughs> that looks like a, a lot of fun. <laughs> and I asked Red, hey, is this cool? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. <laughs> My exact words are, I don't care. I just want to get the fucking game started. Because we've been there for about a fucking hour waiting for him to finish. <laughs> I tried to get my list done. Looking, oh, I had so much problem with Battle Scribe. Such a shit app. Oh. Uh, Moots, again, in his inf infinite wisdoms playing this game, didn't put his Terminators in any decent spot. He put them in one room with one exit, which got clogged. <laughs> like what Tom does to toilets. Like, clogs the fuck out of it. <laughs> and by the time it got to, like, the last turning point, he had, like, one point and I had nine. No, I didn't even have one point. No, wait, actually, did I? I think yeah, I had, I think one I had scored. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought I had zero points. And yeah, I, because and you I, killed and all my, you killed all my triarchs. And and I still <laughs> and I still had like fucking seven or six terminators left or something. <laughs> and and then I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna win this in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> It was such a fucking slog of a game, too. I was like, god damn. <laughs> I, dude, I, thought I, I, I was in there with you, man. I, I was experience, experiencing it just as much as you. <laughs> oh, god damn. A, a oh. duality of man type of, type of vibe right there, dude. And then I had a mirror match of Votan with Eren. And uh, during that game, my Thunderkin, if you run Votan, run Thunderkin, because on Overwatch, they disintegrated a call. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they absolutely fucking evaporated that man's entire existence. Stole him. Stole him. <laughs> Stole, him. <laughs> Stole him. Stole him. All his particles got stolen. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on to... Let's leave Swindon behind, shall we? Because Thank Swindon God. was much the same, to be fair. It was just magic and kill team and boarding actions for, for basically just two days. And the magic roundabout. And the ma <laughs> magic roundabout. So hey. at the end of Swindon, so I had to stay behind in Swindon for a couple extra days because I had work to do for the channel. So I stayed behind and did that. I stayed behind and did that whilst these three uh, went up to Nottingham uh, with uh, with Zarek, who obviously appears. No, uh, no, we met Zarek there. Oh, did you meet? Oh, sorry, mm. I didn't realize. Mm. So, so these guys met Zarek there. Who? Had, oh, yes, yeah, she'd been waiting there since like five in the morning for you guys, hadn't she? At six in the morning, yeah. Um, when we got there, she just looked at us and went, Hey guys, thank God! And I just drove right past her because the car park was full. So I just <laughs> left her there. Yeah, I was trying to tell Aaron, Hey, just let me out real quick so I can hang out with Zarek so she's not alone. And Aaron's like, No, she could wait. I'm like, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's been a whole fucking day. She's been waiting since six. She could have she could have waited a, two, a few more minutes. And that she did. Yeah, because Aaron wouldn't fucking stop. <laughs> it was unnecessary. Uh, so what did you guys what, what did you guys do for those first two days before I arrived? I w immediately went to Bugman's and I did the Fire Slayer challenge. Oh yeah, right. Because we also met um, Andy there, or uh, the, the Remembrancer, the, the Remembrancer, Andy of famed Remembrancer fame. Oh, oh is it the uh, Andy, the Remembrancer from uh, uh, Lore Crimes fame of the <laughs> of the crime variety? Damn. She, uh, she, Andy, my law crime till I remembrance her. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Cease, Tom. Cease, I'm and sorry. insist. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. She and this on my law till I crime. <laughs> <sighs> this podcast was a mistake, guys. <laughs> You're the fucking worst. You're all terrible. <laughs> Hell away, T. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I mean, we um, 
Oh, we do. We uh, we went for uh, we uh, we walked through uh, Warhammer World. We uh, uh, read the, uh, did the uh, uh, Fire Slayer uh, uh, challenge and fucking rocked that shit. Fucking gobbled down. They weren't even that hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, pro- probably not. I mean, they're, they're, I think they were spicy, but uh, I mean, it was just it was just that uh, like uh, what's it called, capuchin, cap, cap, uh, I don't know, capsation, capsation. Yeah, but close enough. Uh, you know, r- really strong capsation. Like it wasn't uh, like tasty spicy. Uh, I had a bit of a try, and you know, I I wouldn't have uh, survived the challenge to be honest. But uh, yeah, by the way, all all three all three Zarek, Moots, and Aaron all said they'll try it, and they never did. <laughs> that was I that wanted to. I just wanted someone to do it with me because you just did it by yourself. I was like, right. Okay, yeah, I shit. did do it by myself because I don't seek fucking companionship when I do things. <laughs> no, I just do them. You can do things on your own as well, Aaron. You're an adult. <laughs> no, I'm aware of that. It's just, it's just more, it's just more, it's just more enjoyable if you've got someone suffering with you. <laughs> I feel that, to be honest. But yeah, no, but I mean, it was a really good time. It was super nice meeting Andy. Uh, me and him got a kill team game in where he absolutely rocked the shit out of me. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't really rock you, to be honest. He was playing intercession. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I will say it's Andy. Andy, I know you're listening. So you've beaten three out of four of the Astartes Anonymous uh, team at Kill Team. You will not make it to four. <laughs> Your win streak ends here, Remembrancer. <laughs> Why? When he, wait, he's never played against me. That's what I mean. I'm not that good at playing Kill Team. Yeah, but you can play Intercession. You know how to play Intercession. You'll be all right. I know how to play. Yeah, I know how to play aggressively, but I, playing aggressively makes me lose the game. <laughs> You'll be okay. Do it for the memes, Red. And if you if you lose, just do what you do and shoot Andy in the chest. Just just shoot him right in the goddamn chest. Yeah. <laughs> you you may win a kill team, but you won't win it. <laughs> <laughs> Pistols at dawn. You won't. You won't win at making it to the hospital in time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give, just for that winning, I'll give you a five-second head start. <laughs> five bang. <laughs> no, but Andy's uh, Andy's uh. a good sport. When when Aaron and I played with him, it was really fun. Aaron, sorry, Andy beat me because I made the most horrendous misplay turn one. Uh, oh and God. lost uh, lost a Grey Knight in my first activation because I was such a fool and misjudged some distances. Uh, Aaron lost to Andy because Aaron's just bad at kill team. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I... <laughs> no, I, I just didn't. I just didn't know my fucking team. The Votan one is weird. Yeah, Votan is surprisingly difficult um, in kill team. It's really hard to wrap your head around such l- such low movement mm. in kill team uh, with them. I don't know what you're talking about. Elder Corsairs are, uh, uh, they, they do fine with only uh, uh, limited uh, uh, activations. Yeah, okay, okay. So easy. Yeah, says the guy who knew a free dash. <laughs> you do realize, I, you do realize I, one guy killed three of your fucking dudes before he went down when you are fighting my nemesis claw. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just being an ass. The fucking that free dash does so much. It's ba- basically just a... They basically have uh, free uh, APL, even if it doesn't say it on the fucking character sheets. <laughs> I'd be curious to the ruling for that, because I have a feeling that's just on the first turning point. No. No. It's a, it's a, it's a kill team rule. It's on act, uh, on activation. Yep. <laughs> no, what the fuck? <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> it's great. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, and then and then my and then my uh, one of my uh, the guy with the the box. The the puppet dude, you know the dude the the the, the banner. Yeah. yeah, he he mind he basically mind controlled one of them to move closer to uh, uh, the point, so I can charge him with the dude, <laughs> kill him. <laughs> he he just did the come here, da. <laughs> and my guy was like, whoa, all right. <laughs> I guess we're going over here now, guys. Let's see what's up. <laughs> whoa, night lords, where, what the fuck? <laughs> Who would have thought? Whoa, crazy. <laughs> Oh, fuck, he's stabbing me. Holy shit. Oh, no. <laughs> I have been decapitated. Damn. <laughs> well, why was the Eldar talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. What, did he have brain damage? <laughs> I don't know. 
You know what? I'll accept that. All, all my my kill team boys canonically have brain damage, or at least one of them does. <laughs> <laughs> Completely oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on, so going into, I think it was the third day, I arrived, and as soon as I get through the door, I'm like, I gotta get some food. And before I can even, before I can even do anything, I did get some food, but before I can even do anything else, I get ushered into the main gaming hall at Warhammer World, uh, where these bars is like, Tom, you have to play this game with us, and you have to fucking do it now, because <laughs> my name's Aaron, and I didn't book the fucking tables. <laughs> and it was like our last day. I did, I tried to book the tables. I rang up three different times. It was a 15-minute fucking wait. You couldn't wait 15 minutes, come on. Oh my god. We don't even want to talk about how I managed to finagle us owning two more tables at the last <laughs> day. This is the art of the deal. <laughs> but uh, as soon as I turned up and got this game going, it was really weird because it was like, it was such a strange setup, but it was uh, Zarek and I playing Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines versus Aaron and Red, Necrons and Tyranids. And it was actually really fun. Although Red worked out that game why land raiders are so highly valued. Those things do not go down easy. They are thick as fuck. I gave Tom a land raider too at the start. He did. He did. He graciously gave me a land raider because I didn't bring any of my vehicles save a box nought uh, to Warhammer World, which was a mistake. But lo and behold, there was a land raider waiting for me. But it was, uh, it was fun. It was very, it was very silly, but it was very fun. Oh, it, tur it turned what when we we're setting up. Tom's like, "I'll place my Vindicare assassin under this bridge and hold the point <laughs> <laughs> with infiltrate." And then I go, "I'll place my fucking flares <laughs> nine inches away from him <laughs> across the bridge." <laughs> and we won first turn. <laughs> and, and then and then we won first turn. Then I just looked at Tom and he looked at me and we and we both knew that, that Vindicare was fucking dead. <laughs> we both had a mutual understanding standing <laughs> it was this big bridge in the center it's on it's a uh, it's in the pictures i just posted it had this like, tunnels which where he placed him it's like oh yeah this is sick and then all i imagine is just these fucking screaming blood splatters <laughs> like sparks <laughs> the this marine that where he runs as a vindicare assassin is laying on his back right uh, then he he like looks over and just sees like a mob of like talons and metal just walking towards him under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate death. Fucking, I imagine it's just a uh, uh, it, it, like closed door. Tom and Jerry scream that uh, uh, wav. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next room, uh, Zarek fires a la uh, uses a land raider to fire at it. Uh, the fire at the flares underneath the bridge, and then all the flares come out. And we're just like they, all the marines just see the flares wearing the skin of that one guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then those flares did the god bless the fucking Catan bless their hearts. They held that fucking um, they held that land raider at bay for most of the game. Fucking valiant boys, them all. <laughs> but anyway, the during that game, um, it basically divulged into two sides where. Uh, Zarek had a deal with Aaron. Tom had a deal with me. Tom rushed his blade guard right into my destroyers. Figured out very quickly that destroyers are very goddamn good at killing. <laughs> that was such a strange back and forth because the blade guard kept taking them down and they kept fucking coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Just word them out. <laughs> And then the Void Dragon got got involved, and it all got complicated. <laughs> yeah, the, I I brought my Void my my shard of the Void Dragon, my, one of my favorite fucking models I've ever painted. Honestly, I'm really proud of that one. And uh, that got I got to heroically intervene with the Void Dragon, and uh, that Void Dragon took out almost all the fucking Blade Guard by himself. No, no, he he actually did take out all of the Blade Guard. The only one he didn't take out was the character that was with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the chaplain. That's, the, 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 the blade guard themselves were all killed. They were all murdered. And then it turned into, how am I going to fight? Do I fight the destroy the Scorpic Destroyer Lord? Or do I fight the fucking uh, giant star god beaming at my location right here, right now? <laughs> <laughs> 
Here's the one guy who survived the um, the Catan. This one dude. All six of his Blade Guard veterans ate shit. <laughs> and this one guy with this big pink sword survived. Thank God there wasn't another turn or he would have been dead too. Yeah, he only survived because we ran out of time. He, he, he just fucking teleported out of there. He ran away. Saved by the bell. <laughs> <laughs> he fled. Dishonor upon him. Dishonor upon his family. <laughs> Shameful, honestly. <laughs> I, I my my yeah, in my uh, my flares kept coming back. My race were being healed. You know, I really like how Necrons play. I had I got I actually got a chance to use my night scythe. That was fun to bring that in, then turn it around and then start shooting at some um, eliminators. I like that game. That was actually one of the funner games I've played. That was fun. That was fun. This this trip was also the first opportunity for me to play some 10th edition uh, in general, I, I realized. And man, I gotta say, 10th edition, a whole lot more fun than 9th edition. <laughs> I, I never I, I never played a whole lot of... That's such a controversial thing to say, you don't even realize. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, right, you told me. People actually don't like 10th edition that much. Yeah, uh, it was, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> uh, it's, well, the uh, reason... Well, you are literally... I'm going to say it, Moose. You are actually 10th edition's target audience. <laughs> um, the reason being is 10th ed- edition... Brain damaged. 10th edition is tailored <laughs> towards people who are new to tabletop wargaming. Uh, it, it is the easiest edition to get into from having no knowledge than any other edition of Warhammer 40k. So, like, for you, as someone who's played almost fuck all war games outside of Kill Team, it's super quick and super easy to pick up, isn't it? Whereas... Prior editions, not quite as much. No. Oh, by the way, just a real quick reference. I got some art to commemorate this um, th- this battle between oh, hell yeah. the Midas Saints and the Tyranids. And unfortunately, there are no Chaos Space Marines uh, represented here because that was a last minute edition. <laughs> and uh, I'll, uh, I'll send that into the, into the chat. Yeah, I, I know which piece you're talking about. It's so damn good. It's so fucking nice, yeah. <laughs> This was uh, this was done by free by the way by uh, freelancer uh, thirty seventy on Instagram if you want to check him out. Splendid work. So well that that Midas Saint is actually this Midas Saint that I'm about to put on the screen. And the thing is, he is the uh, the chapter champion. So if there's anyone built for this throwdown, and I'm not saying he's gonna live, but if there were anyone built for this throwdown, it's this guy. He never actually got never got an actual chance to fight the Norn emissary or my overlord. No, because you, you, both of them were positioned so far away from him uh, in deployment that it was just never going to happen. I'll be honest, I think he's about to be turned into the chapter shish kebab. Chapter shish kebab. In my headcanon, he, like, he just completely dodges the entirety of the Tyranids' attacks, and it's somehow the Necron that gets him. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just doesn't think about the thing that's on top. He's like, oh, that, no, that's not the problem. Just stabs, just stabs him in the head. The Necron's not even... No, the, the Necron's not even there on purpose. He's like, help me. <laughs> 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 I can't get down. <laughs> I jumped out. I didn't think he was here. Fuck. <laughs> Of all my fucking tomb, Sentinel Man! Of all the places to wake up after a night of drinking, the Necron was not thinking he would awaken on this thing. A good time. By dead, the dead gods, shit! <laughs> help, help me, Fleshling. Why are you swinging? Stop yelling! <laughs> Hold still, beast, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, barely, and like, stop! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I post some pictures above. Of um, the ones of him and the Void Dragon, back when we did that, when we did that on the bridge. Oh, you actually did get photos of that. I thought you didn't. Oh, well, no, and, and, didn't. and the video of me getting caffeinated. Hell yeah! <laughs> See, <it's a> caffeinated. <laughs> wow, that wow. The okay, that one's kind of Tom. You might need to work out your Photoshop magic for those pictures. <laughs> Fuck this up. The the one with um whatever the goober's name is facing down the Void Dragon because it is so blurry. Yeah, so who took those pictures? That's Aaron took those pictures, right? I did take those pictures. I couldn't get the focus. Uh, yeah, that's just, you press the button to do the... Oh, never mind. No fo- No Photoshop is going to fix yeah. that, Red. I'm sorry. Se- says the fucking ex-professional photographer, right? Uh, amateur. I've just done it for a while. There's just a, There's like a button on your phone for it. Just like one button you press, but okay. You tried. You try- Aaron, you get a points for effort. We know you tried. But I digress. 
<laughs> Turn your attention towards the moots that all eating. <laughs> Just so you know, moots did this for very little money. It did not take much convincing. <laughs> for very little money. <laughs> so for for reference, to- I had I was just hungry. I got into Mackey's. I just wanted to grab something quick to eat. I I grabbed two chicken burgers, and I go out. And Tom just goes, "You get a you get a tenner if uh, you shove that whole thing in your mouth." I said I would take a tenner off the money you owe me if you just shovel that. Th- oh yeah, right. <laughs> For the audience, I want you to know, like, I said that. Literally, I finished saying that less than half a second before that video starts. He was ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, I was going to do that anyway. This is just convenient, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is just how I eat, man. <laughs> like, um, for further reference, like, um, uh, me and a friend of mine here in Sweden uh, basically had this uh, dumb... Uh, th- this dumb thing once where we just basically took a McDonald's cheeseburger and we just squish, absolutely squished that shit into a, as small of a ball as possible and just put it in our mouths. <laughs> 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 and, and and so my working theory as I had the chicken burger was that I could do something approximately the same. But then as soon as I squished together my hand, I realized the regular patty and the chicken are not the same consistency. Nope. <laughs> it, the, the chicken has far more resilience. <laughs> and it just goes in my hand and I just go, ah, shit, well, I'm committed now. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine the shame if you'd bounced out of it like halfway through? Nah, man. You did the right thing. I, I mean, I, I mean, I couldn't, and it was still. I, so I wasn't expecting it either to be warm. So the first thing that happened was that, like, I fucking burnt the inside of my mouth and bit my fucking tongue <laughs> as I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Moods went back to do a walk of shame to go get the a napkin, and so he hands Tom's a bag covered in like mayonnaise and other various. Viscous liquids, I assume. And uh, Tom gingerly is holding this, trying to give it to Aaron. Aaron's like, I don't want to touch that. And then Tom's girlfriend fucking grabs the bag and I go, at least someone's willing to be a man. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) So I've just noticed Aaron's put in the references images the the Nottingham Kitty Cafe. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, with with the... What was that cat called now again? She she was so beautiful. She, she saw she saw more than any other cat because she's fucking her eyes went into all the directions. <laughs> I I forgot the name, but there's uh, some good beans in there. Oh, oh, that was the first one that came up to us. The um, the pale one with the dark face. Mm, they were popcorn. They were good popcorn. Like halfway through that, I just got up and left. <laughs> not not Red's vibe. That was. No, no, it wasn't. Those cats are way too friendly for Red's liking, honestly. <laughs> no, well, be, you sit in this fucking couch surrounded by these assholes, and there's screaming children in there. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That was, oh, my God. And then there's fucking cats, and so I'm so I'm getting fucking pissed off. This is like, this is fucking lame. So I just get up, and I walk down to Nottingham Square, where they have, like, this, like, mock tiki beach set up. I just, like, ordered... Like a, t- a cocktail from there, and I sat there for like twenty minutes. <laughs> I was like, "This is nice." <laughs> oh, that's where you fucking went. Yeah, I, I previously sent a meme uh, that was actually that is actually very uh, relevant to this, uh, which is the, the fucking how I look at the mother of the loud kid in the restaurant after smashing a chair over his head. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, some fucking reason, every time we went into a fucking restaurant or anything, there was always a screaming child. I don't know what what is wrong with England. Why do you guys spawn just such fucking hor- horrid creatures? What is what? I'm not saying beat your children. I'm really not. Oh my god. I'm really not. But when I <laughs> when I Christ. was that age, my god, I I would have feared for my life making that kind of noise. The horror that went through me. It actually gives me anxiety because I, you hear that and I'm thinking, oh no, I'm about to hear someone get smacked because mm. that's what would have happened to me. And it's like, and the smack never came. The crying just kept going. And I can see Red's, Red's face turning red as he gets madder and madder. And I'm just sat there like, well, screaming children, gentlemen, what about that? <laughs> and it's just, oh, it's Fucking just, ah. terrible. But it was, you're right. It was, I'm pretty sure it was the same kid the whole time. Everywhere we went, there was one. Red even had to deal with one last night on the plane on the way home. It wasn't us they were following, it was him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit, maybe Red got cursed at the Museum of Curiosities. Mm. Oh yeah. 
Why? That happened way- the, the kids that were happening way before the fucking- It was a pre- it was a pre-ordered curse. It was a pre-ordered pre curse. pre-ordered curse. You, 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 just, you just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, we went to the Museum of Curiosities to see a bunch of fake spooky shit. We saw Moots' father. <laughs> <laughs> he got locked up. Father. Help. <laughs> Real life pixie. My son. <laughs> We got uh, we got little um, funny little uh, necklaces with little uh, spooks in them, little, little, little spooky dudes. I don't think you can call them that anymore, much. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I didn't mean it like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Goodbye, YouTube monetization. Goodbye, Todd. <laughs> but uh, no, sorry, we've actually jumped ahead of the second big uh, 40k game that we had whilst we were there. Let me just post some pictures in the reference tab. Because that game was, um, it was a game. Which one? <laughs> it was a game of all time. Of a fucking game. Wh which one are we talking about? The, the Wotan, Wotan versus... Oh, yeah, that one. So these guys thought they were being funny, uh, 3v1-ing me with three sets of 500 points of Wotan versus 500 points of Midas Saints, my homebrew. Five, five, no, 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 you had 1,500, we had 500 points. Each. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Oh, yeah. 1500, yeah, to sort of, to sort of have an even game. Um, little did they know when they put their list together that I would have Zarek helping me. And Zarek is what we in the business like to call a power gamer. So, uh, shit went sideways for the Votan pretty fast. But still, even like, we, we had we had very many funny moments, I think. The I, fucking my bikes part, colliding, bro. The bikes, the bikes. This is a glorious moment where two bikes with the Votan pi uh, pioneers, is that what? Yeah, versus the Space Marine attack bikes. And keep in mind, the Space Marine attack bikes are not like the Outriders. It's a trike with guys in it with only ranged weapons versus a hover bike with two dwarves in it with only ranged weapons. So they're just th on bikes throwing hands and they're actually doing damage to each other. It was so dumb. It was one a turn. Yeah, it was fucking... Well, yeah, your guy just had his fist. The Votan had a fucking knife. Actual bumper cars, yeah. Oh, God, that was dumb. I'm thinking about getting a commission to do that, but I can't, like, a, a commission for that to commemorate that moment, but I can't think of, like, an angle or a shot where that would look good. So I'm thinking about just getting someone to do them just charging at each other instead. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna draw that. I, I wanted to draw that. Well, save me some money. <laughs> I mean, I never said that. You're still gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna draw the the scenic shot boots. Well, we you you messed out the part where like I spent fucking too long deciding like five rolling all my dice. I forgot to roll for the fucking auto cannons that were just on the bikes because I forgot those existed completely. And then I was so disheartened by all of, by doing absolutely nothing with all my guys. And then he's like, hey, you can charge. You just have to make an 11-inch charge. And they gave me the dice, and I just, like, tossed them down. He did it. He just straight up did it. <laughs> and we're like, we did, like, six and five. We're like, yeah! <laughs> and so the Votan, ch like, char the bike charged into the trike, and then he stabbed him with a fucking plasma knife. It was such a wacky fucking charge. Like, one in a million. Well, technically, like, two in 12. But still, it was really funny. Oh, there's my Vindicare assassin finally in that picture stood on the building. I've got no- I've got one good picture of my Vindicare assassin, and it's him from behind. <laughs> so dumb. I love how in that picture, you can just see me and Moots blurred in the background, just <laughs> <laughs> Me with the obligatory cowboy hat, hell yeah. You can see- <laughs> you can see with that picture of the Vindicare assassin, aka the, the Space Marine Vindicare assassin, who's got, um, the little two next to him. That's two grudge tokens they put on him at the start of the game. That's how much they wanted him fucking gone. Cause he blasted Moots' Carl into fucking oblivion. Uh, and we found out later that uh, he shouldn't have died because because I was playing him as uh, Ufar the Destin. All damage should have been re reduced to one. Oh, you fool! <laughs> I, I was a fool. <laughs> <laughs> but we made up for it by uh, fighting my hearth, uh, my Iron Hero champion, absolutely fucking destroying Terminators with little to no e with little to no difficulty uh, and, and with the fucking uh pioneer bikes coming out from the side of the fucking uh, map and just blasting the vindicar assassin to was, that was so funny i think the only the only like actual like sad casualties you had that were like depressing were the two bikes that got blasted on the fight back and aaron sagittar that was killed at birth that was that was bad yeah that was depressing because fucking, I don't think Zarek w was aware 
that these two are effectively total beginners when it comes to like big 40k games so, uh, so i had to i tried to say like halfway through a deck you, know, you gotta you gotta hold back a little bit this is getting a bit out of hand you want the three fucking bikes next to each other to burn. Uh, <laughs> and then it just continued on as normal and i was like right okay fuck sagittarius gone that's dying that's gone T- Terminator has been put in front of two already advanced units so that was a fucking actually good fucking play that was horribly unnecessarily brutal and then you realised it so you put your fucking blade guard in Baghdad or like might as well be on another table going oh yeah I'll put him here out of pity <laughs> this is a pity <laughs> But um, oh. well, so just I just want to I just want to mention that this is the fourth game in a row I've played where I've brought this one venerable dreadnought box knot, and not only has he not died, he's actually done well. He he outperformed in one in two games in a row. Actually, he outperformed two ballistas dreadnoughts. He was with box knots. Venerable dreads just have the magic. They just have it. <laughs> just the magic. They are venerable for a reason. Yeah. Uh, I would like to state that at one point I wanted to bring a fucking Brutalis to a game, and everyone said I couldn't, and you're all dicks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me, I didn't do that. I will. We shall, we will We will have that uh, amended at some point. But either way, yeah, through, through all the adversities of that game, the Jork Union. The Jork Union. <laughs> God, I hate that name. This is a fucking awful name. You, you, you joined in on the Jork shant. You, you can't escape. Watching a three-man fucking handshake. <laughs> jork, 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 jork. I, I was drinking a lot. I went back to the fucking Bugmans to keep getting those fucking ciders. <laughs> the Copperbergs, yeah, they're good. Well, as much would say, Copperberg. But yes. Uh, I think I was like four in. By the time the game, like by the time the halfway through... And then Boots is like, go, can you go give me water? And I came back and was like, oh, here. He's like, it's for you, actually. I'm like, oh, I don't want it. <laughs> he didn't even fucking drink the water. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I got a Koppenberg first, because that's just my drink of choice. And Red was like, what's that? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a cider. And he's like, oh, and you don't, you don't even taste like any of the booze? He's like, no. He's like, that's dangerous, man. And I was like, yeah, though, that bug was, dude, go get some. <laughs> and he just sort of waddled away. But the the whole jork thing was because I was sat there and I was like, oh, it'd be really cool if we came up with a name for like our three Votan <laughs> leagues working together. The jork Union. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Because it's like the fucking second or third time uh, we've sort of talked about that. This is the first time all of the vote all the Votan I've bought everyone actually met in person. Peace Stone didn't forget theirs. <laughs> so, so, I'm, I'm fucking, you said I had it on purpose. But so I sat there, I was like, what would be really funny? What would be, what, what sort of fucking. Um, anagrams can I come up with and I was like joint operation reconnaissance kin jork bosh done (laughs) 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 as as I said I was like I've got it I was was like boys I've got it joint operation reconnaissance kin and I'm like what does that say jork (laughs) and Red's usual reaction of just I fucking hate you came out oh it's the best thing ever I, I was so happy there I was like yeah jork 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 so, so, every, so then every other time like whenever we met an important drone or something which is I just stood there with someone who's gonna uh, shake my hands like jork 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 jork, 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 jork. <laughs> fist pumping like yeah <laughs> oh, the jork union never dies so what did we do um after that, I mean, that was uh, the last day, right? And then we went back to Swindon. No, no, that was the, that was the day before the last in in Nottingham. You guys got to show me that one um, that one food place that did the really nice steak. Oh yeah, so we did. Yeah, we we went to a place called Pharaoh's Grill House. If uh, you're in if you're in the area, Pharaoh's Grill House is really good. I liked them. Uh, they were they were very they were one of the better restaurants that we've been to. It's r- really really good. Super nice ambiance. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a weird process getting through it, but yeah. Recommended. And um and then we went to the Museum of Curiosities and then we then we mod back on to uh Swindon. Swindon. Oh, we tried to go to this museum. Oh yeah, right. Of like old miniatures and it takes you down this fucking old path and Tom will tell you. This yeah, this was fucking crazy. What was it called again? Does anyone still have the, the name of it? Uh, for Warford something. 
Forge of Hammers? Hammer Forge? I don't remember. War Hammer Forge? Forge Hammer War? <laughs> War Hold for up. Forge of Hammer? I'll find it. I'll find it on a map. I'll find it on an actual map, because I remember where it is on the map. Forge for War of Hammer. Boots, you can shut up now. Shut up! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> She forge on my hammer till I war. <laughs> I hate you. I hate both of you. you. Your fucking right to live should be revoked, I swear to God. <laughs> Worst fucking person in the world. <sighs> you actually suck. I swallow as well. Oh, here we go. It was called... Okay. All right. So we, we've got to talk about this. This is like an actual... This is like an actual fucking review we're going to give for a place near Nottingham. In between Nottingham and Newark on Trent. It's called War Games Foundry. And we were recommended War Games Foundry. They've been open for years. They, we were recommended War Games Foundry by Andy, the Remembrancer. Um, and it's a half, it's just over a half hour drive to get there from Nottingham. So if you're if you're in Nottingham for Warhammer World, which obviously you have to be, um, to do this trek, it's like it's over it's just over an hour of driving. Um, both ways in total. So we obviously were like, okay, hey, we got we got an extra day spare. Let's go fucking do it. And we go there, and it's keep in mind, it's the middle of the week, normal hours, and they're just not fucking open. They're closed. They don't put any. They haven't put anything on their fucking websites. Nothing anywhere for us to actually work out that they're closed. My girlfriend and I were parked outside their front gates for like fifteen minutes whilst we were waiting for the guys to catch up. In that time, it took the local fucking gardener coming outside the front to talk to us to say, oh yeah, they're closed today. And we're like, oh, well, that would have been good for them to put that on their website so that tourists can actually, you know, not waste an hour of their day trying to come round. So, War Games Foundry, whilst I'm sure you're great, update your fucking website next time. That was taking the piss. Wasted the fucking, wasted our afternoon doing fuck all. Just driving for over an hour. Sat there for 20 minutes waiting for these guys to turn up. Waste. We did get to see a, a field next to it where a thousand years ago a bunch of illiterate unwashed peasants died which i thought was pretty was pretty neat <laughs> <laughs> yes yes the real yeah we drove yeah in a in essence we drove for an hour and like 15 minutes to see a, a completely perfectly normal field with a placard on it that said there was a battle in the 1400s once upon a time there <laughs> so uh, yeah thank you war games foundry uh, we will try you again at some point but if you're going to be closed, please update your website. It's it's like you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bet and say that they wrote it on their Facebook or something. <laughs> Who, the, <laughs> yeah. Who under the age of thirty checks their fucking Facebook? From? Yeah, I don't know, bro. <laughs> That's painful. But yeah, no. Uh, so my rant is over. I just that just really sucked. It really sucked because you know they didn't update their website. We made the drive. We wanted to see some cool old minis. It sounded really cool. Yeah. They sell them too, by the way. If you're in the area, they they do sell them, and I really wanted to get my hands on an old dreadnought. Yeah. Andy was showing us. Um, they apparently have like the Jeans of the Cult limo on display. Oh, uh, that would have been awesome, bro. I'd have loved to have seen that. Yeah, exactly. I had a dream about that limo. Uh, like you had a dream about the limo. I did. About about tonight, were you predicting the future dreams? No, no, I had I had it. Sorry, like last night, I guess is the correct term. It's, it's not night. It's not night yet. Yeah, no, I I had I had I had a dream about it. Is your penis slur now, Tom? Say again. <laughs> is your penis slur now? Um, it's loud. Okay, you European bastard. <laughs> I mean, Fuck. he's he's from he's literally from fairy tale, and don't hold it against him. He can't help oh. it. Oh, fucking white boy over here. That that that's actually a perfect. Uh, yeah, that's actually a perfect <laughs> <laughs> segue. So I've been planning with the boys. So we, since we went back, went back to Sweden, Swindon for one bit, and then we went back to my area. And then since it's all four of us, because um, it was just it was just the team at that point. Um, I've been planning this sort of D and D style open legend game system campaign thing for the boys for a while now. Shout out to Tom. For buying me a, a fucking Legion Glaive when I walked away for five seconds. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But so you've got to mention it. As we were leaving Warhammer World, I bought everyone presents ranging from. Yeah, let's just say there is something we can't reveal it because he watches the podcast, he listens to the podcast. But our head moderator Croc, who was meant to turn up but couldn't for whatever reason, 
behind me sits a couple of boxes with his name on them. <laughs> I will give you your presents, Croc, and we will meet up, and you will get them, and I will beat you to death. Sorry, uh, Aaron, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna jerk you off, Croc. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So basically, Moots messages me beforehand, knowing this is happening, because he made his character first, and he was well on board. And he was like, "Hey, man, can you get your sister to to make me an outfit?" Because my sister's very my, my sister's very sort of arts and crafty, and and I was like, "Yeah, yeah sure. What do you need?" And he sent me the fucking gnome garb hat, fucking gloriousness. And I was like, that's going to be fucking funny. Um, and so now I, I get my sister to make me something as well, because I was like, this is a passion project. I'm not going to pay you, but you are going to make it. And she's like, fucking fine. You couldn't even pay any her if, she wa- if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, straight into that one. And it basically ended up looking something like this. Because I had, Mooch got this glorious silly hat, and robe, and I got this absolutely wicked, fra- like wire framed, held um, wizard robe with like seam etchings and stuff. That fucking hat, that my outfit was in the car all the way through the trip, and Red was getting so fucking annoyed by that thing because it was taking up space when we had such limited space. He's like, I'm gonna throw this away. Do we need this here? I'm like, Yes, we need it. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny that fucking when I, because uh, walked, I walked away for a bit and uh, as I sh- got got changed and Aaron's sitting there like texting me he's like, all right, wait, st- stay there for a bit longer. Red is like going to take a glass of water and then it was like, okay, he's back, go, 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 and I just walking like, oh, oh, <laughs> are you ready for an adventure? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for an adventure? (laughs) Let's go! Oh, baby, let's go! I'll I'll put some of the videos in the references. I don't know if they'll be allowed or not, but there you go. Um, some of some of them are fine. So I was, I was just so I was playing for context. I was playing Svenjamin, the ankle shanker, who's <laughs> a bastard of a gnome, um, and uh, he's he's <laughs> he, he uh, lovingly calls them tollies. <laughs> Lovingly, Tollies. Just calls him a slur, honestly. It's fine. That's okay. We're all, fantasy slurs are allowed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fantasy, fantasy slurs, slurs are allowed. They are socially acceptable. Yeah, I got but the party. Svenjamin got called a knee licker. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. But the, the group is great. We've got uh, Moots, okay, Svenjamin. Tom, aka Skelly Tom, the skeleton necromancer, and we've got Red as a Faust head trauma, the Goliath detective boxer. <laughs> that knows how to box. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking, I remember when we were playing that session, and uh, after uh, the session, after Svenjamin goes to prison, Aaron just goes, I wasn't expecting you guys to get arrested this early. <laughs> what do you mean, you guys? The only person got getting arrested was the fucking gnome that stole something. <laughs> I, I had to, I had to steal Tom's uh, femur. All right, it was, it was, it was important. His character, it was character development. All right, he needed it. <laughs> it had to be done. Exactly. <laughs> Gremlins. Does Vadanya fucking? But a lot of silly fucking shit happened. Um, Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to leave now, boys. Oh, we lose, we lose Svenjamin. Oh, Svenjamin has to go on a magical adventure now, but I leave you guys in good care. I'll, uh, in the good, loving care. Oh, I'm going to uh, Stravania. Yes, I need to steal many femurs. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch you all on the flip side, tallies. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you explode. So the session zero was a lot of fun. 
and a fat fucking mess because Tom and Red got sloshed beyond recognition. It was great. We weren't blacked out, but we were. Well, me and Tom were both hung over <laughs> the next day. <laughs> 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 yeah, we were going to cafes like every morning. Um, and normally Red gets the big breakfast. Insert big breakfast song here. But um, he just didn't get like, I think he got like a coffee and like something really small, like some toast. He was like, fuck this, man. I'm not fucking doing this. <laughs> it was just. Uh, a, uh, a wreck of a man you were in that morning dude <laughs> you seemed fine though Tom oh I was I, I mean I do I, I was fine because I made a point of drinking fucking shitloads of water um, that morning I was absolutely because we were because they were asleep we, I got up pretty early and we, we took ages to get a hold of Moots and Red in the Airbnb and so I just spent that morning literally just chugging water um and collecting my things and sitting in front of like a fan in the living room. So I was like in my element, honestly. I was I was thriving after the first like 20, 30 minutes. Oh hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry. Uh before we move on, I've I've gotta thank a couple people. Um a couple of the patrons helped me out with the esoteric wisdom of uh making RPGs. Oh, okay. And um Voldy specifically did me massive favors by helping me make the fucking map in its entirety. Like, he, he's the one who detailed this to every single little bit, yep. shaded it, made it, out, bought, outlined it. It's still to the northeast. It looks fucking sick. Basic directions would ha- would be wa- do you wonders, <laughs> honestly. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> throw you off the side of the fucking country. <laughs> in, in an investigation, details matter, all right? But no, um, Voldy was a, was a wonderful help. And I'm very, very grateful to the boy yeah. for helping me out of all of this. But yes, Windsor is where he went next. Lovely fucking yep. place. We've already done the Windsor bit. So moving on, after Windsor, I had to leave because uh, I had more work to do. So the, the rest of the trip between Aaron, Red and Moots actually did in fact continue without me for another couple of days. I came back, I got home on like the Monday and they were continuing up until the Wednesday Um so my my objective as soon as I got home was to start cracking out YouTube shorts, catch up with Alex, <laughs> and just you know just get just get everything ready for this week. That's now two weeks before this video goes live. But you know, uh, duty called as it were. Yeah, we didn't do much. We just uh, we went to uh, our, our tattoo guy Joe. He's a fucking amazing dude as always. I love I love hanging out with Joe and uh, getting some uh, some of his artwork done. Uh, and um, yeah. Yeah, after we just hung out with him, you know, uh, got breakfast with the dude and said our goodbyes and uh, flew back out to our native lands to on the Wednesday. Hold up, wait, wait, let me let me get the the good picture of us with Joe up because you got him something fucking cool. Yeah, I, I like to I like to get get Joe something for all the all the work he does and just as a thank you. So me, Moots, Red, Joe on the far right, and then that big fucking um, Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet was what you brought him. And it's just fucking ridiculous. Fucking love Joe, dude. Can't wait to see him next time. Huge ass fucking thing. But you know, his store is based in Egham. If you want some really cool fucking tattoos, we talked about him last time. But I got him for all my work. Yeah. Really solid fucking guy. Um, very, very happy South African guy. Uh, very most passionate tattoo man I've ever met in my life. I swear to God. But um, if you want some cool work, he's multi award winning. Fucking hit him up if you're, I guess, local yeah. or in the UK. Uh, if you could pop a pop a link and uh, like a link to his page, that'd be great. Tom. Yeah, yeah, I'll put that down. I'll put that down below. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. He does only accept online things. He doesn't take walk-ins. Also, people, if you're in the area, don't just walk into his shop. <laughs> Yeah, do mess, mess, message the store. Yeah, mostly Instagram. He takes he takes a minute to get back to you sometimes, but it's worth it. Yeah. Do you guys get up to like anything else in like the post or? Uh, we played some Necromods. How how was Necromods? It's good. It's really funny. It's really really funny. Uh, I wish we could have played some more of it. So for those who don't know, Necromods is a relatively new game that came out. It is uh. Basically, it's kind of like a war game. You can teach kids and get them into the whole, you know, idea of uh, playing war games and stuff. You make these little monsters, your, your, your quote-unquote army, using basically glorified Play-Doh. And um, you get, like, car, you get special dice, and you, you can get these rings that when you kill one, you get to squish it. 
And it's pretty cool. If, if you have a kid and you want to, you want to like introduce them into war games, it's pretty fun for all ages, you know. Highly recommend it. The actual necromolds themselves are really funny if you've got like some lubricant and a big blob of green stuff or some other kind of epoxy. Because if you want to, you can just use them to make permanent versions of the necromolds. Yeah, if you're interested in that stuff, check that out. But it's a very cool, like, what's like retro 90s sort of vibe, isn't it? Yeah, like the old, 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 old like freak, like freak factory cart toys you see when you were a kid. I think isn't isn't the fun part? You actually just like mash them as like part of the gameplay, it's like just actually just mashing them. Yeah, that's the point of the ring. You kill one, you get to smash it with with uh, with this net, this ring you get. <laughs> that's fun. Um, but each of the rings is different, like like in like um, engraving. So when you smash it, you got your little sigil on the board in the dough, and you can do those for yeah. You can that can generate. That, that your things you need to win the game mm -hmm. for your, how many you've killed at the end, and so you get bonuses for killing more things because it's like oh there's X Y there's X amount of corpses with my with my ring thing on them, I get five extra crystals I win the game. But it's really silly. It's really um, you can have a lot of fun of it. Very fun game. Highly recommend you look it in. Mm, that's what I say. Other than that, um, yeah. After uh, Red sat for two full days tattoo wise. Uh, Mooch got his really cool chess piece, which I posted a sort of uh, simplified version of. Um, I drove these boys back to the fucking airport later on in the day. And yeah. now we're back home, thank God. I said our goodbyes. I've paid my Heathrow drop fee. God fucking forbid, the drop fee. <laughs> gentlemen, 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 shall we uh, draw this episode to a close and move on to our patron questions? Because there are a couple that have appeared in the Patreon questions tab since we did this last. Uh, I found one in here, Red, that's just for you. Or it's not just for you, but you're the only one qualified to answer it. Excellent, eh? Right, so thank you all very much for watching. Uh, we're going to move on to the Patreon questions. We will see you next time. Yes, goodbye. Time to die, Aaron. You owe me your flesh in fucking monies. <laughs> next time will be sweet. <laughs> um... Hello, thank you for watching this episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast. If you've been enjoying the content, please consider subscribing or taking a quick look at our Patreon. And if you want the opportunity to talk to literally any of the members of the team, that's not me, please join our Discord. Seriously, don't fucking talk to me or ping me, I will ban you. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Right, patron questions. So, uh, our first one, uh, this one's going to be just for you, Red, because you're the only one qualified to answer it, is from Voldasterian. And Voldasterian asks, What do you think the next big shift for the Necrons will be? And he goes on to say, I know the Pariah Nexus is ongoing, but as far as the Silent King and the Stormlord, who are, uh, as far, yeah, as far but as between the Silent King and the Stormlord, who do you think will make the first big move against each other? Realistically, nothing, because GW doesn't do anything with the Necrons. That's as honest an answer as anyone could give. But hypothetically, what would I want to see? What would you want yeah, to Yeah, what would see? you want to, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a better answer. Yeah, what would you want to see as the next big thing for the Necrons? Yeah. I want to see the Flare King do more. Like, I, I, I don't mind, I, mm -hmm. I don't mind, like, the whole... That's fair. I mean, Imhotek and the Silent King have like this big power struggle because Imhotek's like uh, doesn't like the Silent King, so it's divided into people loyal to the Silent King, people loyal to Imhotek. But like, that's just, just that's just fancy Game of Thrones. I want to see the Flare King. I want to see the goddamn guy who controls all the flares and what his importance into this new Necron culture is going to be and how that will shape things, or maybe some more e emphasis on what Destroyers are like. You know. The, like, give me, give me the stuff that like makes Necrons, you know, kind of tragic. But realistically, yeah, more character-driven Necron stories. But realistically, it's it's probably going to be the Silent King um, fights Imhotek, and nothing really ha comes from that. Or the Silent King manages to convince Gilliman to work with him because Gilliman already talks to the Eldar. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Right, gentlemen, moving on. We're gonna end with a. So we're gonna end with a silly one, one that Red will undoubtedly say, "I fucking hate you all too." So, let's see. Ooh, those are always the best. Always the best. Ah, here we go. Red. A question from Maxine, and Maxine asks, "Which Primarch do y'all think 
would enjoy Waffle House the most? Aaron, do you want to go first? <laughs> it was uh, which which what Primark. Sorry? Primark. Oh, Vulcan. A hundred percent Vulcan. That man is getting the biggest stack of pancakes you've ever fucking seen in your life, dude. <laughs> Holy it's shit. It's called Waffle House and he gets pancakes. You're fucking actual. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Red. Shut the fuck up. It's a fucking Waffle House. They don't get pancakes, jackass. No, but, but they serve pancakes. They're not. You, Apis, you've been to a Waffle House, haven't you, Eric? No, it's just common sense. It's the same. It's just common sense because you know the menu at Waffle House. It's a sweet breakfast. It's not a. It's not a breakfast place. Waffle House is an arena, Aaron. No, but it can be. No, it's not. I saw you Shut eat up. five <laughs> fucking different things of pancakes for breakfast in the trip. Oh no! You're a living contradiction. I. <laughs> and my okay. Uh, and my, my answer would be Lehman Russ because I'm pretty sure he's the only Primark who actually eats for pleasure, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for this wonderful, entirely uncontroversial question, Maxine. It's fucking. It, well, it wouldn't be controversial if people wouldn't just fucking assume shit. Like, you're, you're a goddamn fucking purist, man. You know that, right? What's your answer to the question, Red? Before Ferris I fucking Manus. leave. Ferris? Why Ferris? <laughs> Because it's a place to test your strength. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I suppose it's easier as well when you haven't got a mouth. You can just shovel them through the hole in your neck. Probably makes things a bit more straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ferris Mass is dead. That's a joke. Fuck you, Oxy. <laughs> <laughs> right, and... Name checking a patron. That's fucking evil, dude. <laughs> and with that... Thank you all very, very much for watching this wonderful and goofy as episode of the Astartes Numbers podcast. Uh, if you are enjoying, please, uh, as per our outro, please have a look at the patron. And uh, another big thanks to uh, all the patron questions, uh, the models of the week, and another big thanks to Law Crimes for covering our last episode. So, uh, thank you all very much, and we'll uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Toodaloo, my good people. I'm not, I'm going to keep recording forever.